Welcome back, value investors. In this video, I will be covering Adobe. Adobe is a very good company. They've been producing quality software for many decades, and they have seen their stock rise incredibly this year. Good for them. I'm going to evaluate the company based on their fundamentals, based on how the company is going to perform in 2024 and in future years, and assess what I think each stock is worth, and then make a decision whether I should buy, hold, or sell Adobe. I'm going to take you through my process that I've developed for myself as an individual investor and share that analysis with you. If you can do me a favor and like my video and subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate that. I'd also appreciate if you could leave comments on Adobe. To make a decision whether I should buy, hold, or sell Adobe, I'm going to first look at the company and make decisions around being a part owner of that company. I'm going to look at their balance sheet and look at their debt level and make sure it's less than three times EBITDA. I'm going to value the company, compare it to the current stock price, and see what kind of discount is available on the stock. And based on the answers to those three general areas, I'll buy, hold, or sell Adobe stock. Adobe's been producing quality software for a long time. I've been using Adobe uh, Acrobat and a couple other products for a long time. So really quality company, they're run really well, and it's just overall a really big success story. Now, what's happened in 2023 is AI has entered the picture in technology and stock prices have just gone through the roof. Now, I think AI is really interesting. I look forward to seeing how AI is going to make us more efficient, is going to improve uh, certain industries. It's going to be fascinating. Now, I am of the mind that we haven't seen clear business models and it hasn't been shown clearly how AI is going to help Adobe. I haven't seen where revenues are going to be increased by AI for Adobe. Therefore, it's just too early to tell if AI is going to be a big benefit to Adobe. I hope it is. And I hope they create great AI functionality. But let me point out two uh, threats against Adobe that AI brings. The first one's internal. The first one being one of the promises of AI is that it's going to be a big efficiency gain. In other words, let's say a big company has 100 people that do creative. They create content, they create images, they create things that are published on the internet and so forth. Well, if AI comes into the picture and they don't need half as many people, okay, then that business has half as many creative people. That business benefited, they reduced their cost. It also reduced the number of licenses they're going to need to buy from Adobe across all product sets. So if AI promises to be more efficient, you're going to cannibalize license revenue from one side of Adobe, and you're going to increase revenues on the AI side. Now, will it be a net plus, meaning the AI revenue surpasses the revenue you'd cannibalized? I don't know, but that's a point that needs to be addressed, and we'll see how they get through that, that, that stage of deploying AI. So that's where AI is going to be a threat internally. Now, let's talk about externally. So AI is going to make other companies, competitors, and other companies that currently are not competitors uh, become threats. I'll give you an example. Google has a huge AI business. And what if their functionality becomes very much like what Adobe can do, very much like what Adobe already does? Uh, Google could become a huge threat and take away some of Adobe's business, or it'll be more price competitive. I'll give you an example where Google completely displaced a company. 20 years ago, if you wanted navigation in your car, I used to own a Garmin um, GPS device and I put it in my car and all it did was just give me directions. And it worked. It was a pretty nice device. It cost $1,000 back then. And Google came out with their Google Maps. And very quickly, it became so good that Google Maps was better than my Garmin. Google Maps is better than the system my car came with that I paid like $3,600 for. So Google really displaced a lot of other technology companies because they came out with a really good product. It was priced really well, which was free. And it really cannibalized or, or took away businesses that other companies had. Well, AI is going to open the door to competitors to potentially compete against Adobe. So it's too early to tell how AI is going to benefit Adobe, how it's going to be a net benefit or a threat. And time will tell. 
time will tell if AI becomes, you know, the best thing that ever happened to Adobe or the worst thing that ever happened to Adobe. Adobe is a very well-run company. In their last earnings, they grew 10%, which was really good because they're a very big company. Their earnings also have been increasing. So their earnings have been going up. Very good sign. In fact, if we look at their earnings, their quarterly earnings over the last three years, it's just a nice, smooth, upward graph. Just really good. I value companies on free cash flows and earnings per share. I take those two models and blend them. In the earnings per share model, I'm going to use the next four quarters that I expect from Adobe, which are these numbers, and put those into my model. From a PE perspective, the software industry has a very high PE because it's a growing industry. It's also very profitable. So the PE it tends to be around 40. Adobe, looking at their forward earnings, they're running with an, a PE of 35. And I'm going to use a higher PE because I think Adobe is a high quality company. And uh, I'm going to use a higher PE in my model. A quick look at their income statement. The revenue is growing nice and smooth, up 10% as mentioned. But consistent with revenue is profit. Profit's also been growing at about the same rate. So that's very good. The profits in the company have been increasing the amount of cash the company holds on its balance sheet. Very good sign. And they actually have more cash than they do debt. So they have a net negative debt uh, status, which is very good. Their balance sheet is excellent. The statement of cash flows looks good, but what was interesting was that the net free cash flow only went up about four and a half percent. So it didn't keep up with that 10% growth rate on revenue. Not a giant concern, but I just wanted to point that out. Free cash flow is another metric that I need to use for my free cash flow valuation model. And that's why it's important. I'm going to take the cash from operations minus the CapEx expenses. These are for nine months. So I'm going to annualize that those numbers and use that as my starting point on my free cash flow model to value Adobe. I believe that Adobe is being sold at a premium of 20% currently. What that means is that I believe each stock is worth $486.71, but the stock market's selling shares for $610, which makes it a 20% premium on this stock. I'm going to go through how I got to that number, and I'm going to start with valuing the company with free cash flows. So I'm going to take the cash flow that the company as I expect them to produce for their full year. That's going to be the starting point of the free cash flow. And I'm going to grow cash flow by about 6%. They've been growing at 4.5% this year, but historically they've been a really good growing company. As companies get bigger, it's harder to maintain that high growth rate because just to compare is a really difficult. I'm going to grow the free cash flows in the first four years by 6%. And then terminal value, all cash flows after year four are going to grow at 4%. I'm going to give them a low weighted average cost, cost of capital of 8% because they have a quality balance sheet, quality business, profitable, very dependable company. When I value all those cash flows and bring them to a net present value in today's value for those uh, cash flows, I get a value of $177 billion in value. I'm going to add the cash on the balance sheet and take away the debt. I get an equity value of $181 billion is the equity value of Adobe using the free cash flow method. The market cap is at $277 billion. So based on cash flows, Adobe is being sold at a premium of 36%. Let's look at earnings per share. So looking forward, the earnings per share expected are going to be $17.38 per share. I'm going to use a high PE of 46. This is a little high, but I'm dealing with a quality company, very dependable, nice growth rate on the earnings per share. So I think they deserve that PE. And I'm going to use a growth rate of 4%. Now to discount those earnings per share that I expect Adobe is going to be producing in the future, I'm going to use this formula and get to a value of all those earnings per share of $680, which is more than the current stock price. So if we look at earnings per share, they're being sold at a discount of 12%. Now I believe that the free cash flow method is the best determination of value in a company. So I actually put a higher weight on free cash flow, two thirds, and a lower rate on earnings per share of one third to get to a blended value. And the blended value per share of Adobe is $486, but the market selling shares for 610. So there is a premium based on my analysis on Adobe stock of 20%. Looking at where Adobe stock has traded over the last 12 months, it looks like Adobe is just doing great. The stock is up more than 80%. It's up 81% year to date. 
But I'm a value investor and I wanted to point out that value investors could have picked up Adobe in this range. I bought shares. I owned Adobe and bought a lot of shares in this range because it's just such a high quality company. Whenever it gets into that buy zone, I buy these quality companies. Now I owned my shares and I saw the stock price just jump, just take off. And it was this AI craze. It jumped a, a, a head or above where I valued the company. And I'm a value investor when I buy and I'm a value investor when I sell. And when I saw that it had eclipsed the value that I had on Adobe, and I do believe that AI is hyped, you know, I don't know if it's 50% hype or 80% hype, but I sold all my shares and I sold all my shares around this zone here and made a really nice gain. I'm glad I did so. I missed out on about 15% of the additional rise. But again, I also benefited from being up on the stock 45%. I currently have a value of $484 per share. So it is being sold at a premium where it's currently trading. So it's time to make a decision whether I should buy, hold, or sell Adobe stock. Let's go through with the company first. I think very highly of the, the business, the industry, and I think the management team is doing a great job. They have really more cash than debt. So their balance sheet's in great shape and well below three times EBITDA. But there's no discount on the stock. And I don't pay a premium on stocks. I'd rather wait until there is a, a significant pullback on Adobe before I'd enter the stock. So I'm a seller of Adobe stock. So that's my analysis on Adobe. I hope you found it interesting. Do me a favor and like my video and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment on Adobe. I'd love to hear what you think on this company. Thanks again for watching.